Should you be using XR with Unity or should you be using Unreal Game Engine? Well, that's a question that I always get as it relates to creating experiences with augmented reality, mixed reality, and also virtual reality. In today's video, I'm going to have a discussion with John Cunningham, which is the government, especially at Unity Technologies. And we're going to be talking about all the advantages and disadvantages of using either game engine. So let's jump into that talk and I hope you enjoy it. Hi, everyone. Welcome to VRAR Bytes podcast, our weekly show featuring the movers and shakers in Central Florida. Uh, today, we have a very special edition of VRAR Bytes podcast. We have Domer Balakios, who is the uh, founder of XR Learn, and and we had we had Dilmer on our last chapter event, and I think everyone is so impressed with the work that he's doing, and and some of the projects that he's been been working on that we said let's let's do a separate session where we can talk to Dilmer specifically around a specific topic. Now this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart, and the topic is what is really the difference between Unreal and Unity from the perspective of a business owner or a project manager, right? So imagine that you're a project manager or you, you own a small business and you need to make a decision whether to use Unreal or Unity to develop a project. You know, what are the things that you really want to know or ask your technical team in terms of the decisions that they're making? So, you know, before we get started, Dilmer, first of all, welcome again. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today. Hey, thank you very much, Sean. I, I really appreciate it. Super excited about today's podcast. I think we have a great topic, and it's a topic that I've been wanting to cover as well in in the channel. So really excited about talking about the differences between Unreal and Unity as it relates to business owners, because I get that question all the time in my comments. So this is, I mean, this is great. We're super excited for it. So tell us a little bit about your, your background, your, your business, and some of the things that you're doing. Yeah, so I, I've been doing a lot of YouTube videos about extended reality. I initially started working, you know, when I started, I started doing videos with AR Foundation. And for those of you who don't know what AR Foundation is, it's basically a platform that allows you to create augmented realities in Unity for multiple different devices. So if you have a device that, for, for say, it's iOS and you have AR Core, you can basically use AR Foundation as a bridge between the two. So I've been doing a lot of videos in that respect. I also got super excited about uh, virtual reality because some of the people that were watching my content, business owners and yeah, company owners, they were asking about virtual reality. So Oculus Quest was coming out. I got excited about it. I tried it out. And I a lot of the things that I do in the channel is basically research and development. So you're going to see a lot of things that I do is basically prototyping. So for instance, I've been doing videos with HoloLens 2. I wanted to try voice recognition so we could, because I'm a Spanish speaker, so I'm like, okay, can I have the HoloLens, wear the HoloLens, and then translate it in real time, because that could help a lot of people. So I'm always doing a lot of prototyping uh, in the channel with machine learning, VR, XR, and yeah, I love XR. So another <laughs> thing that, I, that I've also been doing, and John is <laughs> saying yes, is I also been, I launched a, a training course, so I compile a lot of the questions that I've been getting from, from the community on how to get started with, you know, extended reality. And there's just so many options available in Unity today that I think are really powerful. And so I wanted to break those down into a training that could help people get started, not only developers, but also anybody that wants to jump in without the, the coding skills. So a little bit of extended reality and, well, actually a lot of content of extended reality. Yeah, I mean, your, your channel's got lots of great content, and we'll make sure to put the post in the bottom of this, uh, of, the, of, the, um, of the document, right? Because um, there's just so much good content there. Okay, well, look, let, let's jump into some of the questions, okay? So first of all, you know, when we talk about Unity and Unreal, there's always this difference between C++ versus C Sharp. Can you tell us a little bit about what's the real difference between the two? Yeah, I, I think you I think you nail a question because I, I come from a C++ background, so I can tell you a lot more about it and why I did the jump to, to C Sharp. So I, I started with C++, and C++ is a very powerful language. Uh, C Sharp is, is very powerful as well. So, But when it comes to finding talent, like if you're a business owner and you want to find talent, I mean, I'm doing that all the time with my own business, trying to find people that help me out with different projects. It's a lot easier to find people in the C-sharp ramp, and specifically with Unity. 
And, and the reason for that is because uh, C Sharp, it's a lot easier to a lot easier to learn. There's going to be a lot more people that are willing to. There's also a bigger community of C Sharp developers as it relates to Unity. So when you're working with C++, you still can find content. But in my experience, I think C Sharp has a lot more content. And you can find if you have issues and bugs. And you know, if you think about the Unity Asset Store, there's a lot of assets in the Unity Asset Store that you can use. And a lot of them are back in by, by C Sharp. So a lot, of, a lot easier to find talent. And to me, I, I, I like C Sharp as far as like readability. It's a lot easier for me to read C Sharp code that it, that it is to C++ code. And a lot of people that start in that world, they experience the same thing. So, okay, so what's causing there to be more C Sharp developers than C++? Is that? Yeah, and that's a good question. I think is because Microsoft is being, so Microsoft is trying to do what's called cross-platform. So they've been pushing a lot towards .NET Core uh, right now, it's called .NET 5, so they've been pushing a lot of cross-platform. It used to be that Microsoft used to be all Windows, and everybody was like, oh, well, Windows, I want to use Linux, I want to use other operating systems. So we have this monster company that is that is very, very, you know, they have the budget and they have the power to back uh, a language that it's getting a lot of attention, which is C-sharp. So C-sharp is just getting a lot of improvements. I mean, we have C-sharp A that just adds a lot of flexibility a lot of power to the language. And the the cool thing with C Sharp though, and when you when it relates to extended reality, is let's say you have a business today, right? And you're you're working on creating a game. But maybe tomorrow you decide to have uh, maybe one of your coworkers comes up with an idea and you want that you want to create an app or you want to create something else. Well now we have C Sharp that you can use for cross cross platform and you have Unity, right? right. A lot of a lot of people don't think about Unity as as a making app tool and, and actually that has been changing over the years. Now, there's a lot of companies using Unity for more than games. I mean, VR, AR, MR. So finding talent uh, with a powerful language, finding talent with, you know, a big community, you know, as it relates to C Sharp. So I think C Sharp just, it's just, it's going to grow over time. And then we're going to be seeing kind of like C++ plateau over the, you know, over the next few years. Okay. So tell us a little bit about blueprints versus pure code. Yeah, so so when it relates, when we talk about blueprints, uh, that's a term that Unreal uses, and, and and it's actually pretty cool. It's a really cool term of using visual scripting. So if you if you have designers in house, and let's say that none of them are coders, and all they know is is you know the visual aspects of it, I think blueprints works. And that used to be that Unreal was the only one doing visual scripting, and that's was one of the reasons to go with Unreal. Well, that changed in the last couple of months because Unity now has visual scripting. So uh, Blueprint is great, but then you also, I was reading in some of the documentation of Unreal and one of the recommendations that they give you and as a, as a creator is, well, you want to know Blueprint, but you also want to know C++. So even though you're going to have designers working on Blueprint, they still need to know some C++ because it won't give you the full power of the engine. So that's okay. what Blueprint is, uh, where we talk about pure code is we're basically are, have full control of the code. We're creating classes. We're creating interfaces, integrating. So basically just coding everything from scratch. Okay, gotcha. All right, now the other thing that we always hear is, you know, if you really want to create, you know, high powerful games that are desktop based, you go with Unreal. But if it's mobile applications, you go with Unity. Um, you want to comment on that? Has that been changing? Yeah, that that used to be, and I, I actually got a job at a at a very popular studio a few years ago, and they're called the Void, and they do virtual reality, and yeah. and they're pretty big, and and other ones as well, and and that used to be, you know, if you want to do AAA games, you want to use Unreal because it creates is beautiful, and they still do. I mean, they create beautiful graphics, and they do a good job at doing that. But over the last few years, Unity introduced the scriptable pipeline, so. They've been pushing a lot of what the power that, you know, was once offered for Unreal into Unity. So now you have the flexibility of if I want to start a project today, let's say that you developers want to target, let's say the Oculus Quest, right? You want to go for right. Oculus Quest will be like a mobile, kind of like a, a low end type of, you know, intensive graphics. So in that case, you can decide, okay, do I want to do, do I want to use a standard pipeline? Do I want to use 
URP, which is the universal rendering pipeline, which is meant for more of those mobile type experiences. And, and then they also introduced something called HDRP, which is the high definition rendering pipeline, which is a very, very, you know, amazing pipeline when it comes to, for you know, very high quality graphics. So Unity now provides you with that. And, and I think the cool thing about Unity, it's if you don't want it, you take it out. So if I don't want to do HDRP, you take that out and you replace it with URP. So I, I feel like Unity is more modular when it comes to that because you can just say, okay, I want to use maybe I'll prototype with you know URP for this experience, but maybe we want to do more realistic experience for the next version so I could use HDRP pipeline. So, so is the cost then and the difference between using a uh, the UDP or URP and, and HDRP, is that kind of the cost of creating the artwork? Because if you're going to use high definition modeling, you're going to have to put a lot more investment in it, right? Exactly. Yep. And that's, that's going to be something that you have to sit down and, and decide is if you do HDRP, there's also a cost, not, not a cost in Unity, but the cost of, okay, the 3D. You know, the 3D models now need to be more detailed. There's more texturing. Is it going to be photorealistic? So definitely something to take into account and, and just know that with Unity, you're going to have the flexibility of, you know, three different pipelines. And you can also create your own pipeline with Unity, which is something that I think is really powerful by using the scriptable pipeline. Okay, great. So another question here. So so we're seeing that that the use of XR is, is going to rapidly be moving into the mobile space, right? Untethering the device, being able to use the Oculus Quest and the other devices. So tell us a little bit about how you view the growth of 5G and mobile XR. Yeah, <laughs> I, I see that grow in the analytics. I, uh, and that might be a little vague, but I see more people jumping into, uh, they want to know, you know, how to get started with Oculus Quest right away. I mean, I'm seeing huge growth on the amount of people that are getting interested into, into those experiences. I see, a, and there was a video that I can link in the description that talks sure. about the future of Apple a, as it relates to, you know, the, re, the general consumer, you know, adapting to, so, so right now you have a phone and, and the experiences for augmented reality are, are you know, are, are cool and, and they're very powerful. But then if you had, you know, the glasses on. So I think that's going to come. And, and I think businesses need to, I mean, if, you, if you're in a business where you want to provide solutions like training solutions and you can use mixed reality to, you know, to cut that cost versus, right. you know, being physical in that way. I think, you know, 5G and having, you know, having faster speed, you're going to be able to download data, you know, much faster at all time. You're going to be, you know, having mobile experiences like the Oculus Quest, being able to push some of those experiences for maybe training. That will that's going to be ramping up pretty quickly. Where do you, what do you now? You, you you did a lot of of work on integrating AI and machine learning into XR. You want to talk a little bit about that and what things we should be looking looking for there? Yeah, I think AI is uh, Unity is doing amazing amazing job in in artificial intelligence. I mean, heads down. And, and the reason why I say that is because I've been, I, I really recommend businesses to look into ML Agents. Okay. They, ML Agents is a Unity solution that you can basically start creating either, you know, reinforcement learning with, with Unity right in the game engine. It doesn't mean that it needs to be just a game. Again, Unity can be used for, for a lot of different things other than games. So machine, I would say look at ML Agents because that is a really good solution. There's also a lot of push towards computer vision in Unity where you can basically create syn uh, synthetic data. And that's something that I've been experimenting with. And they had an example that I think is really powerful for, I mean, any type of business that, have a, that has a product that wants to perhaps do image recognition. And when we talk about synthetic data, we're, we're basically creating data in 3D and then making it look uh, real enough that we can train agents to recognize different patterns. So. I think there's just so many possibilities with, with AI and Unity because you don't have to really worry too much about, you know, having like learning uh, knowledge on C++ on right. open, open CV that are really complicated, but use a framework that gives you, you know, a modular system that allows you to plug things in as you need to. So if you were an Unreal developer, right, what, what machine learning or AI package would you use there? 
I have very limited experience with AI in Unreal, but from, from what I know, I mean, there, there's cloud solutions that you can use, and those are cross-platform. So, for instance, I've been using Azure to, to be able to, you know, detect text or, or basically capture my voice and translate it. So that's a solution that is also offered as a, as a web, as an API. So right. APIs can be consumed from, you know, from anywhere where you have an HTTP connection. So native solutions, I, I haven't really seen other than using things like TensorFlow. So I, I feel like, in my experience, I feel like Unity, it's ahead of the game when it comes to, when it comes to AI. If things change, I'll let you know in the channel as I experience more about that. Yeah, and, and I want to remind everyone that if you go to, to Domer's channel, he's got lots and lots of different videos where he's created stuff in Unreal, he's created stuff in Unity, he's he's compared the two. So so please definitely take advantage of that. Um, okay, so there's a there's on on this podcast we have the five and five, which is like five questions in five minutes, and I want to jump into those because I think those might pull a couple other things out. So number one. Um, what do you, what is the most interesting XR related project that you've either seen or that you've worked on? Some of the most uh, interesting, I mean, I, I've been looking at different things with uh, image recognition. So there's a person on Twitter that I follow that what he did with augmented reality is, is basically has a piece of paper and that piece of paper has a drawing. So what the augmented reality experience does is basically scanning the picture and taking it into an actual 2D element that you can see in, in augmented reality. The cool thing with that is that you can start animating that, you can start, you know, interact. Uh, let's say that you want to draw something and animate it, it basically mm -hmm. creates an animation of that. So I, I think that was really cool uh, project where he used, he used AI and also augmented reality for that. Okay, great. Now, number, one of the other questions is, what do you think is one of the biggest uh, things that are blocking broader adoption of XR. And, and let's focus this more on the enterprise. What what things are keeping you know XR and the enterprise from being adopted faster? Yeah, they, they still don't understand the, the technology and the capabilities. And I think a lot of the things that I've seen in, in the industry, especially in the enterprise, is anytime something as cutting edge comes in, it takes time for them to adopt it. So I think understanding the you know how it's going to change the future like for me is if i if i had an enterprise i would have a research and development team trying to prototype as much as they can because a lot of the things uh, that i've done in my career is basically comes down to prototyping and and understanding what's available in unity and and unreal i mean you talk about unity and the possibilities with ai and how you can optimize processes in your own company i think it's huge i mean being able to do computer vision in a game and also be able to port it to VR, port it to AR, port it to MR, th that's huge. Where in previous years, you had to have a team dedicated for each technology. You had to get an Android guy, you had to get an iOS guy, then you, then you Swift, one with Java. You had to get somebody with C++ knowledge. So it used to be very costly, and today it's not very costly because we have solutions in place that allow you to you know, do rapid prototyping by using tools like Unity. All right, that's a great answer. Um, okay, one of the other questions, you ready? It is, uh, who do you follow or who inspires you around the area of XR? Are there any authors or speakers or anybody that you really follow? One creator that I really like and other creators is Lucas. And, and Lucas, uh, okay. takes, Lucas takes augmented reality and extended reality in general to another new level. And because he's, he's taking those solutions and making it in a way that is fun, that, that is the day-to-day experience so for instance he, he he went to to inland and recorded a castle and in the castle he created a map and the map is completely interactive and he used he used ar foundation with image recognition and and basically everything animates so as you walk in through the castle it tells you where you are on the map but he's using augmented reality for that and creating a story behind that. So I, I really like him. And I also like Antonia. She works for Unity in the, yeah, yep. she's, yeah, she's, she's really great. She's always posting things about different prototypes. So I've been looking at her museum that she created with, you know, different interactions about things that she's scanning with LiDAR. So she's one of the ones that I recommend that you look at as well. Excellent. Okay. All right. So now this is a VR AR Association podcast. 
So based on your experience, what are some of the things that you'd, you'd like to see from the VR AR Association? From the VR, uh, I think- Anything that we can help you with or things that you think we need to be addressing? Things that you can help me with? Uh, I think I think in general, I, I really like to, to keep educating the enterprise. So it, it will be fun because I have two different two different communities. One is the community of people that want to get into, you know, XR, which is, you know, the, the beginners. And then there's also the enterprise who have experience with coding. So I think it'll be fun just to cover different topics, either yeah. on AI, on, on VR, AR, talking about like, different um, products. Yeah, what we're seeing is, you know, a couple of years ago, the VR AR Association, we were really just about educating folks about the technology, right? But now it's we're getting very specific around different industries. And really, you're starting to see committees form around the industries and trying to solve specific, you know, challenges or, or create new um, resource guides for those industries. Okay, so, so look, as we come to the end of this, I think in summary, right, to bring this to a close, what your recommendation is, if you're a business owner and you're looking at, and your technical team is telling you to go with Unreal or Unity, what you probably want to be looking at is, is the availability of developers and talent, right? Exactly. You want to look at what's the real cost of building applications, both from an initial cost and from if I need to make changes. You also need to understand what is, how, with, with the rise of mobile technologies, how easy is it to deploy those applications on those mobile devices, right? Do you have to redevelop for each different platform or can you just specify what the devices are? Uh, what did I miss? Well, I think, I think you cover, I think you cover everything. I mean, a skill sets is, is a huge thing that you, you need to look at. Uh, Unreal and Unity, to me, when it comes to the myth of graphics, th there's no myth anymore. Th there's, you can do as almost as anything you can do in, in Unity than you can do in Unreal. So those are myths that, that, that are old. So, so if you're looking for a solution right now, Unity works well for a lot of things. And, and then if your team you know, wants to go with Unreal because they have C++ experience, that's all they know, that might be the option to take. Okay, very good. And, and so, you know, Domer, thanks, thanks again for taking the time to, to talk to me today. Um, today we've had our guest has been Dilmer Valakios, the founder of LearnXR, a fantastic individual. He's doing lots of great work on his own time, helping to educate the, the, the community. And also, I just want to remind everyone that our next VRAR Association chapter event is April 21st for at 6 p.m. Eastern. And we have seven of the leading VR AR device manufacturers who are going to be coming to talk about the latest developments on their VR and AR devices. So you won't want to miss that. Okay, everyone, thank you very much and have a great day. Well, guys, I hope you have a good time by listening to the podcast today. I had a lot of fun talking to John. And if you guys have additional questions on anything that we discussed, please let me know in the comments. I really want to know what you think about either using Unity or using Unreal Game Engine. And also make sure that you subscribe to the channel because that's going to help me in bringing you more podcasts and also more videos about extended reality. Thank you very much, guys.